After the Cold War, it is estimated that the Soviet Union had amassed over 1,200 tons of highly enriched uranium and about 200 tons of plutonium, most of which ended up in Russia. The post-Cold War dilemma was finding, dismantling, and safeguarding all the nuclear material that had been produced to date. In 1991, the Cooperative Threat Reduction Program, also known as Non-Luger, was a program established by the U.S. Congress authorizing the use of Defense Department funds to aid Russia in transporting, storing, and dismantling its nuclear and chemical weapons. In the 1990s, the U.S. government allocated approximately $400 million each year to this program. One would think that such highly destructive material would be properly cataloged, documented, and stored in highly secure facilities. While the Cooperative Threat Reduction Program did aid in disbanding approximately 5,800 nuclear warheads, destroying 439 ballistic missiles, and eliminating hundreds of missile launchers and bomber aircrafts, the issue of loose nukes is still concerning. According to a 2005 ABC News article, the director of the CIA, Porter Gauss, was quoted saying, There is sufficient material unaccounted for so that it would be possible for those with know-how to construct a nuclear weapon. Many top officials believe that hundreds or even thousands of nuclear weapons can be made with the unaccounted for nuclear material. One of the many problems with Russia's nuclear security infrastructure is the lack of a mass balance inventory system. A former top official from the Department of Energy claims there isn't an inventory system in place which properly documents the quantity of nuclear material produced and where it is stored. That being said, if nuclear material were to end up missing, there would be no way of knowing precisely how much material was missing and where it would be located. There have been several attempts over the years to traffic Russian uranium. In 1992, a Russian nuclear engineer by the name of Leonid Smirnov stole three pounds of highly enriched uranium powder. Smirnov explained in an interview with Frontline that he attempted to sell the uranium to obtain a new refrigerator and gas stove. Many fear that poorly paid scientists in Russia are vulnerable to bribes by rogue nations and terrorist groups. In 1998, the Nuclear Cities Initiative was signed by the U.S. and Russia. The NCI aims to create non-military high-paying jobs for former Soviet nuclear scientists. In 2002, the U.S. government allocated $42 million to the NCI and the Initiatives for Proliferation Prevention Program. In 1995, two Lithuanians attempted to smuggle Russian tactical nuclear weapons into the United States. According to a New York Times article, in 2001, Taliban affiliates attempted to recruit Russian scientists, and terrorists on more than one occasion have staked out Russian nuclear storage sites. In 2002, a terrorist group attempted to attack Kirchatov Institute, an institute which still houses nuclear material. With nuclear smuggling and attempted facility attacks on the rise, one must ask, are U.S. and Russian governments doing everything possible to secure and protect the nuclear material?